cool. I, I mean, like it big is, holes. It is. <laughs> wow. All right. We have a grand adventure planned for the next couple of days. We're going to go see some rocks that are apparently racing each other across the desert. That's interesting. We're going to go see... That's all, that's, that's all I know about. I don't actually know, I don't actually know what else we're going to That's actually probably all we're going to oh, see. That's probably all we're going to see. We're going to drive around a bit. <laughs> we're going to drive around a lot. Gonna... It's actually super remote. Yeah. Few people get to ever actually see it. It's like 60 miles of driving in backcountry. What do you mean by few? Like a couple hundred thousand every year? Is that? No. No? I mean, it's like 25 miles of like rough terrain to get there. It's like pretty gnarly. How rough? I mean, rougher. I like a Subaru is going to make it. All right. But like if you came here in a Corolla, you're not Corolla-ing it. Well, that's what we're going to do. And, and we're going to see some dunes and we're going to have some laughs and drink some beers and, you know, we're going to live the dream. We're the first people to go to the racetrack, I think. Well, I think we're the first <laughs> people ever to see these <laughs> racing rocks. Hey, I'm getting, I'm getting up. Wake up, Carl. I'm getting up. I'm working on it. Let me help you here. Let me help you out. Are you peeing in front of my tent? No, nope. I, I was dropping five hours worth of rain off of your rain fly for you. Yeah, which which it loves to fly. Uh, it's kind of kind of garbage. Yeah. The point of those is to uh, shed rain, and instead the tapuya uh, flies <laughs> just collect it. <laughs> hey, at least it collects it in the fly and not inside your tent. I mean, I'm I'm hard pressed to call that a feature, but <laughs> but yeah, okay. Sure. I'd say minimum requirements met. <laughs> yeah, they need a little rigid pole in the middle or something. Yeah, because... Yours is worse than mine, though. Mine collected a little bit. That was like a gallon of water. We don't need that kind of talk. <laughs> and you can adjust a little, um, the little pole things on the sides to like try and get the tension right. It, but it doesn't matter what you do. I've, I've tried all the settings. Huh. Tighter, looser. Yeah, whatever. You just wake up and bat it. It's fine. Well, you well. Hey, here's the thing. I was in. It was 20 degrees outside, and I was. I mean, you no, know, it's above freezing. 34, let's say, in Arizona, and I had to get up at like 4 a.m. So I get up, and I'm forgot about that little feature. <laughs> and as I'm going down the ladder, my back hits this thing, and I get a whole gallon <laughs> oh of frozen God. water down my pants as I leave the tent. <laughs> Boy, was that delightful. That's the worst. Yeah. Alright, so today we're going to be coming up to Stovepipe Wells, all the way up through the actual Death Valley, going to check out the crater, then from there, uh, our final destination is down here at the racetrack, uh, but we're going to get as far down this trail as we can and camp somewhere, somewhere in this area. 
Uh, this total is about like 25 miles off-road, so don't think we'll be getting all the way there tonight. Oh, Zach's, uh, Zach's social calendar was too full this weekend. He, he went diving in San Diego, and then yesterday he went mountain biking up near like Crestline or something. And now he's coming out to meet us, but uh, he, uh, his ETA is like 3.40 in the afternoon or something. So <laughs> it gets so, dark about 4.30. <laughs> so we'll, he's gonna we'll miss see. day one. <laughs> we'll see him this evening. Uh, what he is gonna miss is jets there are a lot of jets flying by so we're gonna head out and see if we can catch some jets and uh, poor Zach is gonna be so sad he loves jets and we're gonna get them all well joke might be on us we'll, we'll see <laughs> yeah we'll see if there's jets John and Danny went out last night um, I thought we'd agree to do like a Monday to Wednesday but they want to do a little bit longer and I couldn't go last night so all right so we're pulling out of the uh, Panamint Valley which was our first first campsite um, which is uh, it's really pretty it's, it's one valley to the west of um, the actual Death Valley, so it's inside of the National Park, but it's it's one valley over. Um, but it's really pretty, and it was a nice place to camp. Uh, we went down to the end, and you can see the uh, see the dunes and a nice snowy peak from there. So it's a really nice spot. Um, but now we are headed out, rambling down this dirt road, uh, and then we're going to shoot over to Father Crawley's Point, which looks into Rainbow Canyon. And we're really hoping to see uh, a little air show. So Rainbow Canyon is where the Air Force does a bunch of uh, training exercises. So we've been hearing the jets fly over all morning. So we're hoping to head over there and, and be able to see them flying through the canyon. So uh, we'll see. Hopefully we're about to cut directly to a shot of jets. There's no jets. <laughs> we're so excited. There's a little service up here. I did some research. They said Mondays are the worst days for jets. It's Monday also. It's very foggy. Yeah. So I've tried to explain to Danny that, um, so we're here to see some jets. And, and as enthusiastic as Danny is about this, I tried to explain to him that the one thing you don't want to do in any kind of aircraft is, is fly around a bunch of cliffs in the, in the fog. <laughs> And uh, as you can see, visibility, quarter mile, tops, probably less. Like it wasn't this bad 10 minutes ago. Well, no jets. We uh, tried to check them out at Father Crawley's point. Um, it was just too foggy and stormy, so. So now we're, uh, we're going through the pass from Panamint over to the actual Death Valley.
Uh, Danny, where are we? We are at Ubihibi, Ubihibi. Yeah, something like that. Ubi crater. It's a crater. Why'd you want to see this? I, it looked cool. I, I mean, like it big is, holes. It is. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, I think that that's a wrap. Hey, it's big. <laughs> I saw I saw pictures of it. It doesn't it doesn't give you the scale no. how big it is. Like it's massive. Can you get can you get those people hiking down there to show scale? traversed the actual Death Valley. We saw the Devil's Cornfield. It was cool. Oh, that was the Death Valley. Yeah, we went directly like through all of all of the Death Valley. We also acquired one. <laughs> we finally one acquired Zach. one Zach. Yeah. I drove through that in the dark. I didn't see It was cool. <laughs> it was very neat. So we, uh, yeah, we traversed uh, basically all of the Death Valley, more or less. Um, we went to the, U oh man. Ubahibi? Ubahibi. Ubahibi. That pronunciation is definitely not correct, but uh, the big crater at the top. Oh no, that crater is called... It's Ubahibi. Ubahibi. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's where you pick up Racetrack Road, which we are currently on right now. Uh, and it's 27 miles off-road from the crater to the racetrack, which is uh, more or less the main goal for for the trip here is just to get to the racetrack. This is all, it's all been leading up to that. So we're poised for victory. We're about 20 miles out. All right. In other words, they spent most of the day driving farther away from me. We did. We did do that. Yeah. That's the thing that happened. They're out in Death Valley right now and I'm on my way to meet them. I somehow left this morning at like 11. I meant to leave at like nine. I was behind. Uh, and it was only supposed to be a four and a half hour trip. Uh, but I needed to pick up a couple things on the way. And at this point, I'm four hours into the trip. And I somehow still have three hours to go. Yeah. Zach spent most of his day four hours away from us, regardless of how fast he was driving. Yeah. I woke up this morning and thought it was going to be a four hour drive and it took me seven and a half hours to get. It was four to hours to where we slept last night. Yeah. Breakfast time. You got going on there? I'm just making a little uh, vanilla coffee bean. We got it from a uh, guy in San Francisco. <laughs> nice. at the campsite, um, just south of the Ubihibi crater. Maybe John will dub in the correct pronunciation of that later in post. Okay, no, he's not gonna do that, so. I'm gonna sound like an idiot for the whole video. Okay. We're gonna see if we can find somebody who came up the other side, which is a little more technical, and just see if the trail is passable. Uh, and if so, we'll just keep, keep shooting straight on through, go down to Saline Valley, and then camp there and head out in the morning. That's I thought, a, it, I thought it was this, funnier. That makes this better. So, John, uh, how are you feeling about the, the Lippincott Road that we're going to have to go over? I'm a little nervous about it. Yeah? Tell me I, about your feelings. Because I have, Tap the, into them. I have the most limited truck here. I'm the slowest. I have the least clearance. And I'm the most careful. 
And so uh, I don't, I'm worried about getting left behind. That's, that's valid. We would leave you. No. We'd just drive away. Yeah. Yeah. Not Marines. Yeah. No, Very what much. I'm really actually more worried about is going to a section where I can't get through and then I have to back down a cliffside for 30 minutes. I super don't want to do that. That's yeah. Fine. Yeah, it's a valid here. I, I didn't expect to be so entertained walking on just flat, dried mud. I had I had pretty high expectations, but they are met. It's um, you, you look at pictures and stuff. It's just the scale of it. Like this is just very big. It's big, and it kind of messes with your sense of distance, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Like everything, it's like seems like you're pretty close, and you're you know a half mile away. But yeah, it's it's super cool and it's weird how the sound carries. Also, when you drive by, you look out and you're like, oh, that's way too far to walk. <laughs> and then you walk for like five minutes and you're halfway across it. Yeah, super crazy. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely, I'd say one of the most foreign landscapes I've ever walked on. Like just the ground, like can you get the ground? No, yeah, look at it. There it is. Super crazy. Super crazy. And it's like rock hard. So we just got onto uh, Livencock Mine Road. So this is the, the little bit of section that uh, it looks like we may actually require four-wheel drive vehicles. Um, so we were a little we were a little concerned about it because it's not maintained, and they said that it can wash out and stuff. But uh, we talked to a guy uh, who was just coming by a camp, uh, and he said uh, everything looked good. So uh, we're we're going for it. So it turned out this trail was, it's not over yet. We still have a long way to go down. At least, I don't know, 600, 700 feet, maybe a thousand feet. Uh, it was definitely technical, but not as crazy as I had feared. It's steep, so it, it is extreme in that regard. But um, so far, we haven't, no one's even had to get out to do any spotting. So that's nice, I guess. I don't know, we don't mind doing that. Slow, slow going though. Picking our way through a lot of rocks. And um, a good place to bash the side of your car against a mountain, which I hope they put a boulder in the road down there. Uh, well, apparently Zach thought there's a boulder in the road, so this could get a lot more interesting. Perhaps I've spoke too soon. What are you curious to see? Oh, there's a rock slide boulder in the road. Oh, down here? Yeah, so I want to see how these three do it. Oh, it, he's going. It looks a lot wider than it did from afar. Oh shit. What do you guys think? Should be good? Oh, I think we'll be fine.
Yeah, that's unbelievable. I took like a like a 20k panorama of that. Nice. Okay, we just came down uh, Lippincott Mine Road. It was the perfect amount of uh, excitement for us. We had to spot a little bit, but just in like one spot, and it really wasn't that that bad. I hit my slider. I mean, my my skid plate. Yeah, you scraped it. It sounded loud. Yeah, you didn't. it didn't do anything. You didn't hit that hard. Oh, glad I got it. Yeah, I got overconfident and I was like, I'll clear it, no problem. And then there was a loud bang. Uh, but hey, that's good to know. The, uh, the stock stock forerunner skid plate can take a hit. So yeah, we came down. Can you, can, come on, come with me. <laughs> come with me. We came down uh, Lippincott Mine Road and we're about to hit this T right here uh, for Saline Valley. And if Zach pans up, you can see Saline Valley. It's so gorgeous. Unbelievable. So now we gotta figure out where we're gonna camp and what we're gonna do. We've got one more night and then we gotta we gotta head back to our respective homes. So I guess this is our COVID style um, finisher here. <laughs> we got Danny and then Zach. He's actually, how far away are you? Are you six feet away? I was probably four feet away. Okay, let's make sure you're six no, feet you're away. Like, you're like 10 now. I need you to project <laughs> from back there too. What? You have to project. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Speak from your diaphragm. Let's start with you. Uh, these are our new COVID protocols. Zach has to stand six feet behind me at all times. Always right, right. <laughs> I, it's like a camping hype man. All he right. stands behind me and says nice things. Let's let's just <laughs> just finish off this day. What do you, what do you think? Uh, I would I would venture to say this was our best trip to date. I would say that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we just like God. We saw so much good stuff, and then so many things that we didn't think were going to be great were great. This is just like, overall. What do we not think was going to be great? Yeah. What do we, well, think, we didn't think anything was going to be bad, but there was a lot of places where we just happened to be driving through something, and it was super epic. The racetrack was way, yeah, way cooler than I thought. Well, I mean, I guess I shouldn't say that I thought it was going to be. I was just, like, stunned by how cool it was. Yeah, racetrack really delivered. Yeah. But even just, like, the road heading up to Rainbow Canyon was, like, all this. It just, you know, it seemed like a little road in the middle of nowhere, and it was, like, gorgeous, just nothing but views. Best possible conditions I think you can ask for from Death Valley. And the Saline Valley, we got really lucky because we came over yeah. the mountains at like kind of sunset. Yeah. And it's just so pretty at sunset. It's insane. Like the whole valley's blue, but you still get like the red and orange yeah. in the back. It's just awesome. I mean, we hit all the all star valleys Death Valley, Panamint Valley, Saline Valley. I drove through the Death Valley at night, though. I didn't really see it. Oh, yeah. You missed out. You we'll missed out on half again. of it. Yeah. We'll do another one. Yeah. Because there's still a bunch we haven't seen. You know, we didn't even make it down into the southeast section of the park. Like, we didn't go anywhere near Furnace Creek or any of that. So, there's a lot more Death Valley left. We'll be back probably this year. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Great trip. Seems like it's the only place open. A surprisingly lack of things went wrong, though. Oh wait, my light, my light controller. That was very on brand. Yeah, and six people burnt themselves on jet boils. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we all seem to have forgotten everyone, how to use a jet boil. Everyone burnt themselves on a jet boil. My light controller ran out of batteries. My new GoPro sucks. <laughs> GoPro died. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a whole diatribe about that later. No, well, not here. Okay. Yeah. Plenty of things went wrong yeah. to keep this on okay. brand. Yeah. It was just everything else was so good. I had forgotten about all of the the trials and tribulations. All right. Say goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Follow us or don't. <laughs>